Hello, Ogies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, Image Radio call sign KE0OG, located in southwestern Colorado today, and here to bring you Ask Dave, number 173. And what we're going to be reviewing today is a new radio from an old Chinese supplier that's Baofeng. Their UV5R collection has grown quite a bit. This is a UV5R++ that I picked up in early 2013. So we're over five and a half years later and we're picking up a new radio called the Baofeng UV5RX3. Now what's interesting about this particular radio is not that it's an just an FM only radio. It's not a digital radio. It's a plain ordinary radio. But what's interesting about it is that it works on three bands. On two meters, which is 144 to 148 megahertz, it works on 1.25 meters, which we don't hear a lot about, which goes from 222 megahertz all the way up to 225 megahertz. And then there is the uh, 70 centimeter band, which is 420 hertz up to 450 hertz. Okay, so this is a three band radio covering the three, what were the three most popular VHF bands. Um, and this is kind of a resurgence. I'm seeing a lot of radios starting to come out with 220 megahertz capability or 1.25 meters. The thing that's really interesting about this is that 220, which used to be 220 to 225, was a very popular VHF band, just like two meters. In fact, when I lived in Los Angeles, I had an ICOM 220 only handheld that I used on my uh, morning commute. Uh, which was quite a long commute uh, and enjoyed that very much enjoyed the community that I found there but then the FCC in its infinite wisdom decided to take two megahertz of that band and give it to United Parcel Service because they claimed they need it and certainly they were a growing company at the time they're very very much bigger today than they were back then and so what happened was uh, UPS got that allocation of radio waves. And ham started just crying great big crocodile tears in the street. Managed, they made so many tears they made the Mississippi River overflow. And everybody was saying, woe is me, we've lost the band, all this kind of thing like that. Well, that of course is baloney. We lost two megahertz out of a five megahertz band. Okay, that leaves three. Now, remember that the 2 meter band from 144 to 148 is only 4 megahertz wide, okay? Uh, the 6 meter band is 4 megahertz wide. Uh, those are our big bands. Uh, until you get up into the UHF region because the UHF 70 centimeter band is 420 to 450, that's 30 megahertz, although a lot of radios just do 430 to 450. Uh, for whatever reason, they don't cover that bottom 20 megahertz, which is mostly for weak signal work anyway. So that's a long explanation to say, boy, am I glad to see equipment manufacturers starting to put 220 back on the air. So it's FM only. It's not digital or anything like that, but it is on the air. You will find very few 220 repeaters these days. But it's a great simplex frequency, great for outings, things like that, club events and so on. The price is right. Let's look at what it shows on Amazon here. For $49.95, you can get it from uh, Radiotity. Now, Radiotity and Baofeng have this sort of a thing where they work together on some projects, and this happens to be one of them. So first, let's take a look at what's in the box. Okay, let's take a look at what came here. Uh, this came to me from Radiotity, not Baofeng, okay? Uh, it's the UV5RX3, all right, and it's labeled Baofeng. It looks like a Baofeng. I also asked them for the programming cable. It says, manufactured by Baofeng, designed by Sane Sonic. Well, Sane Sonic is Radiotity. Okay, it's just a different name they use on Amazon. But they sent me the programming cable, and 
it came with a little uh, disc here, a little miniature-sized CD. I must confess, I had trouble using that. The programming cable does work, um, and I'll show that. I also got two antennas, uh, two extra antennas. This is a shorter antenna that's tri-band, okay, since this is a tri-band radio. And this is a longer antenna that is uh, also tri-band. Oddly enough, the radio itself does not come with a tri-band antenna. Okay, so let's open it up. We've got a radio. Okay, the radio right here. Now there's a difference between this and your classic UV5R. Let me get the other one. Okay, the one on the right, this one, is your classic UV5R. It's UV5R++. Okay, and notice the one difference, this has a band button on it. Okay, so you can switch back and forth between the two bands. Now the instruction manual says that this one has a band button, but that band button is missing. However, we can get along without it, as I'll show you. Now the battery on the thing is very easy to remove. You press down on this little thing right here and slides off. Okay, and if you look in here, it tells you which model it is. It's the UV5RX3. The X3 is three bands. 7.4 volts, 7.2 to 7.4 is what everything Chinese does. It's got the three bands there. Notice again, this is a part 90 device, so it tends to cover some other services too. I really wish they wouldn't do that. If they're gonna import this for the ham radio market, I wish they'd import it just capable of ham radio frequencies. This battery pack, the uh, BL5, is the same battery pack on all the Baofeng radios. They've kind of got that standardized, okay? Now, there's um, a um, battery charger, okay? Now, I want you to notice this plug here. See that? Doesn't that look just like any other old 12-volt plug you've seen? It's not. It is 10 volts. That's very important. I have seen YouTube videos where people are complaining that when they connect this to DC, it burns the thing up. Well, yeah, uh, because this is for 10 volts. You've got to use this little thing right here. Uh, and they do make a separate device that you can put on. It's a battery eliminator that will take 12 volts from your car. Do not plug this in 12 volts. You'll fry it. Okay, so there it is, the nice little a battery charger. It takes about five hours to charge the battery, okay? There's a user's manual, which actually is written in passable English, which is very nice. I like that. This right here is uh, an earphone that uh, plugs in on the side of the radio. A little extra thing for the microphone. This has got Hang on. Okay, you can unhang on now. This has got a little cord. This right here plugs into the side. This folds out. The thing goes up. See how it goes up like that? Not down. Up. Push that in all the way. Make sure it's in all the way. Then this right here goes over the ear. Right here. And then this is the microphone, and there is a push to talk button on the microphone. Or you can use with this with Vox, which I don't recommend, because there's just too much background noise with a mic like this that's not held up to the mouth. You'd want to hold this, and then when you want to talk, you reach down, grab the mic, push the thing, and hold it near your mouth like this, okay? Don't do it down here. It's not going to pick up near as much. Do it up here, and then it can hang the rest of the time. Also, this is a belt clip for the back. Attaches there. I tend not to put belt clips on my radios, but it is there. I do tend to put this on radios. This is the um, this is the hand strap that'll hold on to it. Now, this is strange. There are two antennas. 
okay? They appear identical. They're not. As you can see on the bottom, one of these, it doesn't want to focus for me. Come on, focus. Okay, now you can see it there. It's 136 to 174 and 400 to 520. And this one is the 221. So you'll need to mark these so you don't always have to look at that in the dark or something. Or you can order for a few extra dollars, not very much, from Radiotity, and you can get to this from the Amazon website. Here is a antenna that's a tri-band antenna, and this is a tri-band antenna too. It's quite long and give you a little bit more gain. Okay, if we look at this picture right here, it shows all the buttons and so on, and I'll go over some of those. But one of the things it here shows is number 13. Okay, number 13. Number 13 down here is the band key or band switches. If you look at the radio itself, yeah, there's nothing there. Nothing there at all. You've got your VFO MR, which switches you from, in Japanese uh, radio terms, VFO to memory recall. Okay. In Chinese terms, the VFO is called frequency mode and the MR is called channel mode. So we'll turn this on. Mode. If you change this. Okay, and the AB button switches between the top and the bottom channel indicators, okay? So we're on the bottom now. Now we're in the top where the arrow is. Now we're on the bottom. Now if I want to get to a different band, okay, I'm gonna go up here and I wanna put in a frequency Oh, we have to go to frequency mode. Yes, of course. Okay, here is two, 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 two six, six, zero, zero, zero. Okay, that's how you change the band. Now we're in the other band. Now we're in frequency mode. If we were to use the up-down buttons, see how it moves the button, the, the frequency up and and down with the buttons. There's no knob, so you have to do it that way. This is one reason that you want to have all your frequencies in memory already, rather than trying to do that on the fly, but it is easy to do on the fly. Now, if you want to change things like offset and so on, believe me, it's a lot easier to do uh, in the programming software, although you can do it uh, from the radio up here. You cannot let's go to channel mode. Channel mode. Um, okay, that's Six. let's go down here to the bottom. Six. Note that these have um, Five. names. Four. These have names, okay. Um, and you cannot put the name in from the keypad. You have to put the name in from the programming software. But just about everything else you can do from the keypad. Now one other thing that the band button is used for uh, on the radio is to turn on and off the 1750 hertz tone used in Europe for repeaters. So if you're in the United States, you're not in Europe and we don't need to worry about that. Another thing it will do is switch between the upper and lower broadcast band. This radio will will receive uh, FM broadcast. On those same places flipped, going red for the first time. Okay, it works on FM. Again, you can put direct entry in here. Unfortunately, the device does not have a channel memory devoted to FM channels, so you have to kind of remember uh, which are yours that you uh, want to remember. In this drawing, 15 is the SP and MIC, or speaker and mic. 15 does not show up up here. 
okay, it should be the same as 11. Now 11 is, um, it, well, it's called the accessory jack, which is where you plug in the programming cable, but it's also where you plug in the little uh, speaker mic uh, assembly goes in there too. Make sure when you plug it in, it's plugged in all the way. It's a little hard to do. It's, it's stiff.